So our guest speaker is Sean Barber. Um, he is a professional uh, cinematographer and works in media right here in St. Louis. So he's going to take about 20 or 30 minutes um, to talk about <laughs> his, his um, experiences. Um, and so I know some of you have taken broadcast several times and so um, may have a, an interest in it in a career. Um, and so this is a great example. I've got former students who live in like, you know, California and New York and whatnot. Um, but Sean has made a career um, in his area here in St. Louis, which is pretty cool. So he's going to kind of talk about what that, how you can do that, how he did it um, and show you some of his work. And so if you have questions for him, um, you can um, put them in the chat. And so Sean was my student at Clayton High School. I used to teach there um, before um, I got the job at Parkway Central. So um, without further, further ado, I'll go ahead and let Mr. Barber talk Ooh, and share a screen. Thanks, Mrs. Stricker. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I'm just going to get right into it, um, showing off my work that I've done the past couple of years. So that was a uh, pretty brief uh, sizzle reel of kind of the stuff I've done past three years or so. Um, definitely more of the cooler projects I've gotten to work on versus um, some of the other stuff I do, but nonetheless, it's all fun and um, brings its own set of challenges with every project. Um, so real quick, my background, I've had a lifelong passion for video production. Um, I've done video production since like fifth grade or so. Um, and through high school as well as Ms. Stricker mentioned, I took a class junior and senior year, um, graduated in 08 from Clayton High School. Um, in 2011, I interned at Amherst and UE um, and I got that internship through uh, a connection I made at Webster. One of my professors um, was um, a communication specialist there and he, um, made the internship happen for me. So, so I'll probably stress multiple times throughout this um, brief presentation that you live and die by your connections. So it's important to, um, you know, not burn any bridges, but also just to establish strong connections with whoever you gravitate towards as looking up to as a leader or somebody that could possibly employ you one day. Um, um, during my college years, I for three summers, I worked at Philmont Scott Ranch, which um, is a large summer camp based in New Mexico, and it uh, hosts 25,000 plus people per summer. So I did video work and got to carry a camera and tripod in a backpack up a 12,000 foot peak, which was really cool and unique. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever, unless I go back there to work there, um, we'll have the experience again. Um, so I always say that I'm a cinematographer first, and um, but I didn't um, pigeonhole myself into or pull myself in a corner with um, with my college degree, and that I made sure I knew every aspect as best I could, you know, as time is allowed in your schedule during uh, college, um, so that way I could be as employable as possible. And that's how I landed my job here, is that I got um, I was able to. I, I love filming, but I was able to edit, and that's probably what 80, 90% of my job is. Um, 
so premium is a company is a third party labor company and we work with larger companies like Samsung or Lenovo or Google that um, and basically we supply them with um, a workforce. So instead of the Google team that goes into store to service displays or to train Best Buy employees or blue shirts as they're known, um, we provide um, training materials for those companies as well as the employees for them. So they're they're working on or working for premium, but, but on behalf of a client. Um, so as, as some examples um, for both Lenovo and Samsung, they have very heavy presence in Best Buy. Um, I, or we, I should say, it's not just me, it's one other guy too. Um, very small team, but very nimble as well. Um, we um, almost every year, every quarter or new products, whenever they're launched are kind of sporadic. We provide, um, you know, feature sets and other information that gets loaded into a learning management system at Best Buy, and all the employees are able to watch it at their convenience and be trained and know how to sell to a customer, you or me, um, the products that are the latest and greatest from these companies. Um, as well as um, Google, we. Um, have assisted a lot with their phone launches. So redoing displays to the new Google, the Pixel 5, 4A, whatever the latest stuff is. So it's a, and I, when I came in from my interview in 2012, I had kind of an idea, but not like a full understanding of what premium is. So it's a, it, just very little things left and right that I'm still picking up on after all this time. Um, I've been here about eight years. Um, day to day, like I said earlier, um, I edit for the most part, um, and we're an all Adobe house. We use Premiere as our main editor and After Effects, and um, those two are pretty much going every day as well as um, Photoshop. Um, and with uh, the other software like Bridge, Illustrator, Audition, I actually didn't know any of these Adobe products until I got on the job and um, my first month or so, I've, it was a lot of um, on-job training, which was great for me because um, I didn't want to you know, obviously lose the opportunity to work for um, such a unique, cool company like Premium is or what they could offer. So um, definitely a perk here and I'm sure other places too um, would offer the same, but again, just me being as well-rounded as I was, it wasn't that hard for me to pick up on Premiere Pro, for example. It's a, and I was off um, using Final Cut Pro before um, 10 came out. So it was, um, the evolution too has been really cool to see. Um, and even in my time at Webster, I was able to see um, mini DV, DV tape to like solid state um, media, you know, stuff that you would have to capture real time versus minutes, which was just such a game changer, especially with the DSLR revolution that, you know, and I'm not that old, I'm 31. So <laughs> it's a very short time. And like I said, every or everything now is so um, accessible and easier to get into this. Um, so uh, here's another kind of quick, um, sizzle reel of sorts, but I'll talk through it a little bit. Um, so for filming at premium, we do a lot of gr green and blue screen, as you can kind of see from these examples as they pass by. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, a 20 by 20 or so studio space that's a white psych. And then we also use mini sets. So um, as you'll see probably in the, yeah, in the next slide um, or two, you'll see that, you know, it may look like a giant space for some of this stuff, but it is done in very, very small, small places. Um, we also do a lot of in-store um, filming. So for example, Samsung has a, um, like this right here is called the Samsung Entertainment Experience. And we go in there to um, train or provide um, 
video training for employees as well as um, our reps that go in to service those displays. Um, it's just a lot easier versus trying to make something happen in a big empty room. We also cover tons of events. So um, like for Google, for example, we cover their phone launches quite extensively. So from beginning um, to the preparation, to the launch, and then the aftermath of that. And it's gotten some really good press. Um, it's gotten very, those videos in particular have gotten high up on the uh, um, uh, chain at Google. So our, our stuff is seen. And a lot of what we do too um, is internal training that we have some, and we're trying to break more into um, uh, broadcast stuff, but it's, it's, it's hard and also, we usually deal with a lot of things that are before launch. So Lenovo always comes out a couple months before their product announces even. So um, this one, this shot here was shot in a practical home. So there's our, there are homes in St. Louis that A, look that great, but B, you could rent out for um, a fee. Um, and that was a 10, 12 hour shoot with a six, seven person crew. So big lights, big everything is, like I said, there's some photos in the next slide I'll show you. Um, we also go into large studio spaces like Avatar Studios is one of the biggest, I think the biggest in Missouri, just in downtown St. Louis, up Jefferson, and um, Bad Dog Studios is another one that has a big, big space as well. Um, another kind of on job training I had was photography. So I was able to uh, learn how to use flashes, how to just learn everything basically um i took some photo classes in college but um it's just with technology just kept changing and you know i never used flashes for example it was all black and white film photography um versus digital it's just different and how you obviously develop it and how you um, process it so uh but i use that mainly for the portraits at premium as well as um, some events we cover, but also in the behind the scenes. And move on to those next. So um, these are just some stills from our larger shoots. We have um, um, this one here is uh, <laughs> overnight in Walgreens. We shot like two or three nights in Walmart, unfortunately, <laughs> which is pretty grueling, um, but you know, you kind of do what needs to be done. Um, and these two are at um, our warehouse with our new branding, which is just looks really cool. Uh, it's a big, it's a red camera with a Zeiss lens, um, a Best Buy overnight shoot. Um, or we have, this is actually from our um, new corporate video we're trying to get done. It's been <laughs> in progress for like three years just because a lot of internal stuff for us gets pushed on the back burner because we're, we're always constantly trying to win new business um, and keep revolutions going for um, this company. Uh, so the, there's the home that we that I pointed out a little bit earlier um, with a tablet. And again, it was like seven, eight person crew, 12 hair, makeup, lighting. It was me on a dolly with track and uh, lights coming in through the windows. There's some practicals um, behind me, like a sky panel and uh, big lights. Um, very, very nice home, obviously, from the photos. Uh, and this is our studio space. Again, it's like 20 by 20, not very big. That's my desk right there. Um, set up for portrait stills. And again, just trying to um, knowing how to use all those programs to make you know, Photoshop or whatever work uh, hides all the imperfections from not only the person, but also the um, the way I have to capture these. And then um, this is what the set looks like you know, when we're zoomed in on you know, framed up properly um, on the set, those two pieces meet. So, uh, so bottom line for, for me and what I really got out of my Ameren um, internship was that um, the corporate sector for video or just anything really, there's security, predictable hours. I don't have to worry about, you know, well, I have a job tomorrow. Will I, you know, be employed? 
Um, the benefits are taken care of, you know, there's, I get health and uh, 401k benefits for retirement. Um, and I really like the collaboration. Um, you can't get that if you freelance, which freelancing in St. Louis is pretty healthy. Um, just again, you got to make those connections and just get in on and seize an opportunities where you can. Um, but I'm on a team of like 10 people. The marketing team is where I fit under in this organization. And, um, you know, we just really have grown to, you know, know each other's quirks, but as well as like our strengths and weaknesses, we complement very well. Um, as well as um, premium is providing me a lot of growth. I started as a multimedia specialist, now I'm a manager of multimedia. So I'm just um, not only in title, but I've also, you know, obviously grown a lot in experience and know how to do a lot more than I knew five years ago. Um, and they really care about um, family aspects. So if there's something like last minute that I need to um, take care of, they're really cool and flexible about my scheduling. So um, versus like you're, if you're freelancing, then you're kind of, if you don't work, you don't get paid sort of thing. So again, just the security predictable hours is key for this job. Um, I landed my position, um, again, said it before, broad knowledge base, just I love cinematography, but I know how to edit. I know how to use After Effects, Photoshop, all those um, when I was applying for this position. Again, seize any opportunity you can, just try to reach out, um, especially if you go into college, college and pursue um, a video production or film degree, just try to seek out people that aspire you to make do great work um, and ask for opportunities. So, uh, yeah, I kept it relatively brief. I hope it was <laughs> informational for you guys. <clears throat> All right, I was listening on my speaker, so I had my <laughs> headphones out, but um, so uh, um, Sean, he talked uh, at my class earlier today, and I kind of thought it was cool when he showed us his kind of organizational system. And he had mentioned that they use storyboarding. Um, and so he, he shared one of those storyboards that he did for, or that his, uh, somebody else on his team made, but I thought it was cool. So I thought maybe you could share that again. Yeah. Um... Let me show you the really cool Samsung video real quick. So when you guys are looking at the shots, like when you're watching these videos, he was behind the camera and mm -hmm. editing these. So I just want you guys to realize that these are things you that look like commercials that you see on TV, but they are actually made by him. Yep, and internal, like I said, all internal stuff and also, um, uh, me just like moving the camera, but there was somebody pushing me or pulling me as well as somebody pulling focus for me. So I don't have to, you know, do three things at once. So it's, it's a team effort. And like I said, the, uh, freelance market and the people we've made connections with are, it's really strong and really cool that what we can create. So here's, uh, the Bigsby video. Say hi to Bixby, Samsung's built-in intelligent assistant. To ensure you have the most current version of Bixby, first perform an Android software update. By performing the software update, you will automatically have access to the newest Bixby. Manually update your software by going to your settings. After that, click software update, download, and then install. You can also automatically update your software by simply clicking on the notification to install. You should receive a notification on any major update if you're connected to the internet. Once your software is up to date, you can access Bixby by selecting the Bixby app. Next, sign into your Samsung account. After you've signed in, be sure to take advantage of Bixby's built-in tutorials so you can get the most out of its features. In the Bixby Marketplace, you can add a wide range of services called capsules to enhance and customize your Bixby experience. 
and combine commands to have Bixby do multiple things at once. For example, you can tell Bixby when you're leaving home to turn off music, make your lights dim, and start your vacuum. Bixby is constantly learning from the apps and services you use, requests you make, and choices you select. Then it applies what it's learned to make your experience more personalized so you can get what you need faster. Hi, Bixby. I'm going out. Unlock the full potential of your Tab S5e with Bixby, Samsung's built-in intelligent assistant. There's one other one I, I know I didn't show earlier, Strecker, but I wanted to show this group. You guys see how organized his server is? <laughs> yeah, this is a 96 terabyte central server that we have, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> It makes me want to go through my Google Drive and re and clean it up. Uh, so it, um, this was actually um, a collaboration with um, uh, Antidote Studios, which is they're based out of um, in downtown St. Louis. Um, Google tasked us with um, uh, creating a hype video and also um, informational, fun informational video about uh, Chromebooks. And they gave us like a six week turnaround and stuff and they wanted animated. So we were like, okay. And we, you know, sought out uh, Antidote Studios and they were able to turn this around, but it was our um, storyboarding and planning that helped make this kind of come to life um, through Antidote that did all the animation um, and artwork. So it's, it's a fun series. <laughs>
So that was kind of, that was a fun project to collaborate on. Definitely different um, outside the norm, kind of what we typically do as you probably saw. Uh, is it cool if I show one more, Ms. Stricker, about um, this is kind of a, more yeah. of a sizzle reel from beginning to end that's relatively short. So, let me find it. so like I mentioned earlier, we do, um, a lot of event coverage. Um, it's slowed down. It just well it depends on the need and the client and all that. So for years, Samsung was like, "Can you be at this event?" Sure. Can you be at this event? Okay. So um, they have a lot of international training meetings all over the country um, to train up on the new products that are coming out for like the um, Black Friday quarter four, um, what we're in currently right now um, cycles. So. But at the beginning of every year, there's something called uh, CES, Consumer Electronics Show. Um, for five years or so, we were able to go out to Las Vegas and um, film around Samsung's booth, which they usually have the biggest one. Um, so this is the end result of kind of that. Oh, hold on, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> uh, there we go. It's on a whole other level, man. It's it's definitely an honor to be chosen to be here. I've got to see all kinds of neat innovations and products, as well as work with some really great people from Samsung and just learn so much about our new technology. It's a lot more interactive than last year. I like how the attendees are able to have an experience rather than just coming and learning about our products. What we've got behind here is next. One of the issues that customers face a lot of the time is pulling the television right out of the box, and spending a lot of time setting up the TV. We want to simplify that. So with our device, we're able to automatically connect to the TV with Bluetooth Low Energy, turn our wireless information automatically down on apps, and even take credentials to log in set apps. We're able to link to take some of your audio from the television and even move it over to a pair of headphones. So we're actually focusing on basically everywhere. Samsung really wanted to try to message them. How can we take our AI and be different from the other guys? That's when we said, hey, TVs washers, dryers, dishwashers, even refrigerators. We're showing how that looks and we're breaking down that barrier, that four wall barrier that we like to call it on actual devices. I'm in the blue shifter space. So it's really about integrating all your devices to the smart things. And with Bixby, it allows you to for a simple command, you're able to control all the devices at one time. You go from one room to the next, it turns all the devices off, turns all the other devices in the other room on. I am in Shaker Health. They're able to use a Samsung phone and Bixby Vision, and it will tell them what the food is and then how many calories are in it. We're actually demoing a digital cockpit. It's actually a collaboration between Samsung and Harman. We're looking at, at kind of the, the future of what we can do in the automotive industry. The highlight to me is the wall in the back corner. It's a 146 inch micro LED TV that you look at a wall and you don't understand where the TV begins and ends. I mean, it's literally a wall. The power outage was insane. At two o'clock in the day, we had a line. We gave them the nice big cheering clap because people still stayed dedicated. And when the power came back on, it looked like it was day one again on day two. Samsung, FSMs, and the guys from HE and HA. We really just work off each other's energy. It's been a great time, and uh, I've learned so much from them and from the trainers and, and engineers here at, at CES with Samsung. More of the complete one, probably saw clip, or remember clips from the other one. Uh, real quick to the, uh, so from the first video I showed you in full, the, um, Bigsby Tab S5 E video. We developed storyboards for it, um, and definitely for that. Not so much those reels, but the uh, larger shoots like that. And the Game of Chrome's one, uh, we developed storyboards. And there's a free um, storyboarder app called Storyboarder, 
if you just Google it, you can find it. Um, it's very powerful. Um, looks very intimidating, but it's very, um, once you kind of know your way around it, you'll figure out um, how to use it for your needs. Um, and the big thing with this storyboard was we wanted to make sure that we were not rotoscoping, which is taking a tablet screen like this and then um, masking around someone's finger if they're going to a different menu. And you have to do that frame by frame by frame in order for it to look seamless. And that's what a lot of, you know, you know, people in Hollywood, big time studios have, you know, tons and tons of people that are working around the clock to make the special effects happen. Um, we didn't have the time nor the money or really the, um, we don't want to spend the time on it is the bottom line because it's very, very tedious. So with the storyboard, we were like, hey, Samsung, check out these screenshots. Uh, this is what we're going to capture practically. And so we, the end result was all practical with a really nice color grade in the end to make the piece look cohesive. So um, in this program too, say if I wanted to add a, uh, you can add um, dialogue, your actions, um, notes that you have for like, for me, the cinematographer or somebody else. Um, oh, here it is. So if you go over to shot generator, um, you can set your camera, your how wide or how um, uh, long or uh, wide angle lens. Um, determine all that, but you can also add characters. So if I wanted to add a person here, say, oh, this guy is waving at the camera and I wanted to put him, uh, let's see, a, you know, in a, in a bed or something like, just like anything really you could do in here. And it also translates back to, into Photoshop. So um, it's it's a really I recommend since it's free just check it out. There's no gotchas or you know paid plugins or anything. Um, this it just really helps obviously you know, plan what you want to shoot and visualize, and, but also it's a good communication tool for me, the cinematographers, or everybody else to be on the same page. So it's pretty cool. That is great. I love that storyboard thing. And I actually downloaded it after you told me about it. I haven't opened it, but I love that you can, I mean, I'm a terrible drawer. So I'm always telling people, you know, you storyboard how, what works for you, whether you do a shot list or you do drawings, but I think it is nice to have some kind of drawing, you know, and be able to just put something there. Um, so I definitely want to experiment with that um i think that's really cool and i have to say i'm all this watching samsung stuff today um has really got me thinking samsung samsung has some cool stuff out there yeah they do and i mean there's just these are let's see yep these are all the projects we've done uh since we partnered with them back in 2012 so it's wow there's a lot quite a number of other ones that we've these are only ones we've cataloged um, we, we use a system where um, it's a big database, so we put our final renders here and then tag them. So that way, through that software, we can just type in Samsung, you know, CES, and it'll show all this Samsung CES videos we've done for them. So, awesome. yeah, it's it's a fun gig. So, options <laughs> fun. So, well. Um... Thank you so much, Sean, for coming um, and saving parts of your day today. And yeah, no um, and I would I ditto what you said. Um, connections are everything. It's what got my it's what got me both of my St. Louis teaching jobs. Knowing people in your area of interest. So, like you said, don't burn bridges. You know. Um, don't be afraid to reach out to people when you are looking for a career in something um, and just keeping in touch with people. That's why going to, you know, like you went to Webster, um, people who go to Mizzou, I think have a leg up or like Missouri colleges, St. Louis colleges have a leg up 
if you stay connected with things that are going on in St. Louis with your, and then with your college and you get involved in internships, I do think you have a, a, you know, it's a lot easier to find a job in that area that you kind of went to college and, and whatnot. So. Well, and also with on uh, why I chose Webster over a lot of, I mean, there's USC, there's obviously much bigger colleges and all that, but what I like doing is what I'm doing now is editing, filming, you know, being into production. I'm just kind of beginning to end pretty much. Um, Webster allows you to the first day, you know, have access to equipment and resources versus like USC or a lot of other big film video schools. You have to wait till like your junior year to have like the, you know, your senior project or whatever, at least from what I understand. I mean, to just, I guess my point in saying this is just look at the program and ask those kind of questions if you're interested in pursuing this as a career. Say, hey, when can I touch camera? When can I touch computer to edit? Um, but uh, there's, yeah, it's, I mean, as I said earlier too, it's just you have a pretty powerful camera in your, in your pocket. So just, you know, just keep creating and making stuff and you'll look back at it and say, man, that was pretty terrible, but I'm glad I, I did that then versus, you know, professionally. So, um, okay. but you'd, you'd be surprised too, maybe just, just make content is the big thing too. So. Great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming in and sharing yeah. so much of the insider perspective with us. Yeah, no problem. And if you, uh, Mr. Stricker, can you give you my email address if you guys care to reach out to me and I can uh, I'll respond in kind to any it's, further questions. It, yeah, it really is amazing how, I mean, you, there are so many studios. You mentioned Avatar and then what was the other one? Ad Dog Pictures and uh, uh, Isn't there a number on it in downtown St. Louis, some, something 965 West? Uh, 90 Degrees West 90 is degrees another West. one. Yeah, um, I don't think I don't know if they have like a physical studio space. The other one that's really cool they should check out um, is called uh, Brood and Stroby. Oh yeah, um, these are really really amazing work. Yeah, um, I know yeah, about I mean, them too. Yeah, you know, we're small but mighty, and there's like I said, the freelance game is pretty strong. And it, again, just knowing that guy like me who has who knows ten other people can open up your doors to stuff and you know they might be cool with you know you coming on set just to be an observer not do anything just to kind of sit in and I did that a few times during college um so it helps to kind of see what what it's like with a bigger crew versus just one or two people so mm -hmm. well we appreciate it thank you so much for coming in yeah no problem Thank you. Yeah, everybody give a wave <laughs> as a wave. Thank you. Those are you guys who have your cameras on. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Everybody. Bye. See ya. OK, thank you guys for. Um, for that, um, he's just a really nice person. <laughs> he. Um, he. Uh, is was just a really nice student you know didn't um and just really enjoyed doing the work and now he's made a whole career out of it it's really cool so i just love that i i love that idea that you can that these big companies like samsung and google are um contracting with st louis companies to make these videos you know you think things don't happen here but they do um so uh, I'm not going to talk much more. I just wanted to remind you that um, you should be doing your interviews and filming this weekend, um, working on your project on your own. It's project three is due Wednesday, next Wednesday. I, oh, wait, is it Wednesday? I think so. Um, and uh, in Monday, we do not have class. You have class with your other classes. <laughs> so don't miss those, but I'm taking a personal day. So we don't personally have, we don't have this hour on Monday. So I will be seeing you Tuesday. 
but um, I just wanted to confirm that it's Wednesday is the due date for story three. Yeah, Wednesday, December 9th. So story three, um, if you haven't done your interview prep, if you haven't done your shot sheet, you know, get those in. I'm trying to spend today going through the interview questions through your shot sheets and giving you feedback and grading those. Um, and then um, I know I haven't gotten to grade your second stories, but I'll be doing that too. And then we can watch some of those next week. Really haven't gotten to watch any second stories yet. So I wanna watch some of those. Um, so if you wanna stay, if you have some questions, you wanna talk about anything, 